If you spend any time in the online health world, you've probably seen people talking about this weird bright blue supplement, Methylene Blue. The claims are pretty wild. They're calling it everything from a powerful brain booster to an anti-aging miracle. But what is this stuff really? Is there any actual science to back up the hype, or is it just another biohacking trend that's gotten way ahead of the evidence? And today, we're going to cut through the noise, look at what the research actually says, and figure out if this is something you should even be thinking about. So what is Methylene Blue? Believe it or not, this started out in the 1800s as a simple blue dye for coloring clothes. But here's the crazy part. It's also considered the world's first fully synthetic drug. A scientist realized it could kill the malaria parasite, and suddenly, a textile dye was being used as a life-saving medication. And so, while it has a long medical history, all the new buzz is about what it supposedly does for our brains and energy. So what's the theory for how this stuff is supposed to boost your brain and energy? It all comes down to how our cells create energy in their mitochondria. Think of this process like a highway system for energy production. The goal is to move tiny particles called electrons, think of these as these delivery trucks, down the highway to produce your body's main fuel, ATP. But sometimes, due to age or stress, a roadblock appears in this highway. This creates a traffic jam. Now the electrons, our delivery trucks, can't get through. This leads to two big problems. First, you get less ATP, meaning less energy. Second, you get a buildup of cellular exhaust, or something we call oxidative stress. This is where methylene blue is proposed to come in. The theory is that at very low doses, it acts as a cellular bypass. It takes the electrons right before the roadblock, shuttles them around the jam, then drops them off further down the line. The result, the flow is restored. Your cells can start producing ATP efficiently again, and that harmful oxidative stress is reduced. So that's the exciting theory, but the big question is, does this actually translate to better memory and focus in real life? But here's where we need to pump the brakes. There's a huge gap between that interesting mechanism and what's actually been proven in humans. First, let's talk about the brain booster claims. The truth is, the human evidence is incredibly thin. The main study that gets brought up involves giving a single, low dose to a small group of people and then looking at their brains with an fMRI. They saw a bit more activity in parts of the brains related to memory and a tiny improvement on a memory task, and that's about it. A small, short-term effect after one dose is a long way from proving this is some kind of cognitive enhancer. Now, what about Alzheimer's claims? Well, the initial idea was promising. It was shown to prevent the clumping of a protein called tau, a key problem in Alzheimer's. But when they ran a massive multi-million dollar trial, what they find? Well, it didn't work out. And why it failed is actually a critical lesson. Later research suggested that while it stopped the big protein clumps, it might have actually increased the number of smaller, more toxic particles. It was solving one problem while potentially making another one worse. And this is a perfect example of the classic biohacker playbook. Take a single interesting mechanism found in a lab and extrapolate it to mean it's going to work for everyone in every situation. Not only is that a massive oversimplification of incredibly complex biology, but as we're about to see, it can potentially be dangerous. And this is where we have to be extremely clear. Because methylene blue is not a harmless supplement. It's a potent drug with very serious risks. The biggest one is something called serotonin syndrome. And quite honestly, I don't see this talked about a lot in the videos I've looked at with methylene blue. In case you didn't know, antidepressants are incredibly common. According to the CDC, more than one in 10 US adults are taking them already. And methylene blue strongly interacts with these drugs, including most SSRIs and SNRIs. Combining them can cause a life-threatening flood of serotonin in the brain, and this isn't just a theoretical risk. And so I see a lot of people talking about taking methylene blue, but very rarely do I see them mentioning that, hey, you probably shouldn't be taking this if you're on an SSRI. Second, there is a genetic condition called G6PD deficiency. For individuals with this, methylene blue is an absolute no-go. It can cause a severe and dangerous destruction of the red blood cells. So what's the bottom line here? Methane blue is a legitimate and powerful drug that has a place in treating specific, serious medical conditions like methemoglobinemia under a doctor's supervision. But the brain boosting or anti-aging supplement for healthy people, well, the evidence is pretty weak for that and the risks are real. For our purposes, staying active and healthy for life, this is probably not the answer for most things. The things that are actually proven to protect your brain and boost your energy are the boring, non-negotiable basics, right? Consistent exercise, quality sleep, a solid diet, and managing your stress. And that's the takeaway. Don't chase the weird new supplement you hear about online. Just double down on what we know already works. And if you want to learn more, click right here to listen to the podcast I did on Methane Blue, where I go into a much deeper dive on all things related to the supplement.